Hi, this is Dr. Greg Hickman again from the Andrews Institute. Uh, we've got a, uh, today we've got a young um, college volleyball player having an ankle arthroscopy and we're going to do a uh, popliteal and saphenous block on her for post-op analgesia. What, uh, we do these sometimes in a lateral position, sometimes we do them in a supine position with, with the foot elevated. And that's what we're going to do today. As you can see from this position, I'm, si I'm sitting uh, at her side and her foot's elevated on a Mayo stand with a pillow and we're going to bring the probe underneath and come in with a lateral approach with our needle. So we'll bring the probe in from the other side. The right side of the ultrasound screen, the right side of the ultrasound screen is going to be uh, lateral. So you can see here coming in and when the right side is lateral, the popliteal artery is going to be on the left side of the screen. Turn the gain up just a little bit more. So you can see the popliteal artery beating there. Just above the popliteal artery at 12 o'clock, you see a nice tibial nerve. And then off to the right, you can see just to the right of the tibial nerve is the perineal nerve. It's a little uh, more superficial towards the skin. And then uh, the two nerves in the popliteal fossa are separated like this. And as we come proximally, I'll start sliding the probe up proximally up her leg. And you'll see the tibial and perineal nerves there very well. Popliteal artery still beating. As the, the nerves approach each other, get closer and closer together, the artery is going to dive deeper into the leg and go away from the nerves. So the vasculature is not a problem on this block. The problem with this block, as you can see here, these nerves look like muscle. And you have to be very careful and keep a good eye on it. If you got an athlete with low body fat like, like this young lady, you have to really keep a close eye on those nerves and not get confused and lose them in the muscle. And we can see them right there coming together. Boy, and they're really surrounded by muscle and really close together. First of all, we'll take some chlorhexidine and do a nice prep here. Put some local in so we can tell her nerves are also fairly superficial. They're only about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half deep. And so we're going to approximate that with this local and go in and try straight across the, the screen with the needle. Okay, get our nerves in a really good position there so we can see it really well. Come across the screen with the needle from the right hand side. See it approaching. And we may or may not get a twitch when we get close, we probably will. There's a little twitch in the foot. If you can see a little dorsiflexion. And I'm gonna inject just deep to the nerves here and push them up. Okay, inject, hang on, inject right there. There's an injection. Is there a local anesthetic infiltrating under the nerves? There we go. A good five cc's there. Okay. Let's go ahead and give another five there. I sure did. Okay, hold up. It's ten in. Okay, and then we'll come up to right on, right outside, just to the right of the. Um, perineal nerve, put a few cc's right there, put us about three right there. And then we'll start working over the top of the nerves here superficially. Get the nerves here in the middle of the screen. Okay, inject five right there. Okay, we're still getting a little twitch, even though we've put um, almost 20 cc's of local, you can still see that we have a, a twitch because of the, the nerve is still being stimulated. You okay? Okay, door. Right there, give me a couple right there. Put some more local in here as we proceed. Okay, try that.
five left. Okay. No. You okay. Okay, door right there. And at the end here, I've got the needle in between the ner in the two nerves inside the sheath between the tibial and perineal nerves and split them up just a little bit with our last five cc's. We'll pull back our needle and we'll finish our block. We'll freeze that image right there. We'll save that image to uh, be placed on our, um, on our chart. And that'll conclude this popliteal block. So she tolerated this procedure very well. If you have a patient that you don't want to turn them laterally for whatever reason, and you just want to leave them supine, don't have to worry with movement, you can just raise the leg up on, on a Mayo stand with a pillow, keep their leg nice and comfortable, and uh, do this approach. Now with this approach, you have to push really hard on the ultrasound probe. You have to put a lot of pressure on it. It doesn't hurt the patient at all, but uh, you have to maintain good contact. And the other thing is, is your needle approach on the patient is just the opposite of what you see on the screen because your skin is at the bottom on the inferior part and on the, of the patient and then on the, on the screen on the ultrasound your skin is at, at the top of the, of the image. So unless you invert that, which you can do on your ultrasound machine, you're, you're gonna have to think in inverse proportions with your needle movements. Um, I've done this many, many times, so I've gotten used to it and uh, it's, it's pretty easy once you get used to it. Once you see your needle going the wrong direction, you, you figure out real quickly you need to change and go the other way. So we're gonna get her ready for her ankle scope. We'll do her saviness block and get her into the operating room. Thank you.